Hello and welcome to another episode of the Business Spotlight series. My name is Claudia Thompson and today I'm here with Tim Flynn, who is an ultra endurance cyclist and in 2021 co-founded All Access Studio. So welcome to the show today, Tim. It's really good to have you. Thank you and thank you for the introduction. It's, um, yeah. And um, why don't you kick us off by telling us how All Access Studio came to be? Yeah, so All Access Studio, it started in COVID and lockdown. It, it didn't really have too much to do with that. So me and my uh, friend from school, so we were friends from secondary school, both moved back to Bournemouth at, um, at the same time. And were, again, like as friends do, hanging out uh, more and more, um, going fishing um, as we live by the sea, which is great. And Mark told me about this uh, sort of concept and idea he was building literally in his living room. He showed me it. I was like, it just, it looks like an incredible idea to be able to see a product from any angle in 3D. And at this point, it was a real sort of aquacultural product. But um, I just thought it was great. And I just thought it had so much potential, so much legs. So we, yeah, we just started working that as we were friends. We talked about it a lot every time we hung out and we just started working on it together. And the, things just naturally grew from there like trying to build a product and then trying how do we find our first customers and yeah it was um it was it was great fun opportunity so I thought this is great and I just wanted to do something different to my normal day-to-day -day corporate job which actually then led me to where we are now sort of building a successful company we've been through run fundraising rounds successfully raised around we're now doing our seed round so yeah we're Everything at the moment is going really well. Still got a lot of challenges to do, but yeah, it's been a really, it's been a really fun journey, and I wouldn't have changed it for everything for all the headaches and all the stress from time to time. Wouldn't change it for anything. And you, and you said it it grew naturally, or it's going really really well at the moment. What's your secret? You think? Um, I guess being friends, you know, as co-founders, we haven't fallen out yet. We understand how each other work. I think that's really important. And we're reliable to each other. We, I don't know, we, we can, as, as a co-founding team, so we do have a third co-founder called David who joined the team uh, sort of a year after we started. And we all really trust each other in our roles to move on what the parts we need to move on to get going. So we talk about something, yeah, very dependable. And if needs be, like, you know, one of the things of being a business, sometimes you do have to put in a lot of hours. So when it's easy, it's great. You can might be able to, have an easy week but when it's hard you're going to be doing 80 hour weeks and you've just got to put that in and we trust each other to be sort of I guess we like in the trenches doing that and make sure we have each other's back and um what's next for All Access Studio where do you see yourself in five years time for example oh god there's so, so many iterations of where that could be um I guess if we ask our investors we're hoping for a successful acquisition with <laughs> within that time so we're fundraising at the moment We've launched our service onto like smaller websites. Um, but I think I want us to be like a market standard. So having our 3D photos in, you know, that's a standard thing when you're launching your product, you'd have a 3D photo of the product as the headline hero image and have that as a standard on enterprise uh, websites. So that's working on our integration and yeah, having, having that essentially. Mm -hmm branding an image I, yeah it's essentially creating a new category I think and I think that's what's quite exciting we haven't started up a business which has an established category and traction channels with it's something really new so I think in five years time for a 3D photo to be a word within a business and go let's go get a 3D photo that would really excite me yeah wow that gave me goosebumps there so um you, you you mentioned it there, but say so yeah. What what advice do you have for business owners that are not going like a traditional path that has already been um, paid for them, um, but that, that is doing something that's not out there yet? Um, I, I guess like me first of all, measuring things, always trying to understand because you'll test traction channels and trying to understand if they work or not. You need to be able to revisit them and understand. Okay, I put X amount reselect hours or money into this, so really be able to clearly understand what's worked and what hasn't very important and then testing everything small not having any preconceived ideas about what will work and what won't work for you I guess that's quite quite important for us so and the main thing is is perseverance you want to make a lot of mistakes along the way um and also just like continuously working at it you get a lot of advice saying 
like you'll see a, a company who's grown massively in the last three years and to reduce the story into a nice like one minute soundbite we'll simplify and reduce it down and down but it doesn't show all the like iterations you've had or that great idea they had or that perseverance it is really hard and really challenging and it can really consume you so yeah don't don't look at everyone else and think, oh man, we just had this great moment in their sleep and everything's been playing scene since. It bears a lot of bumpy road going along there, mm. along that great idea. So yeah, don't don't beat yourself up too much, I guess. And other people's success always looks a bit easier to achieve anyway, or you know, because you can't see all the hard work that's behind it. You yeah, see, that's it. said to me once you see someone else's outside and compare it to your inside I yeah that's that it quite... it's it's so easy to look at someone else's success and think oh but you don't know it, it, so <laughs> I think uh, luck is a really like so you can go to a trade show there's thousands and thousands or hundreds of thousands of people walking by and it can be a real bit of luck but the one like a good business which comes and speaks to you how do they spot you amongst all of those and yes you can say it's because I had this great design stand or did a load of messaging but most of the time it's, it's real chance and yeah so again don't don't get too hard on yourself if one thing doesn't work it can, it can be down to luck and it can be sort of that as you say perseverance and sticking in there because it takes a lot of you have to go at something a lot to make it to get that one lucky break I guess yeah and you mentioned earlier, you now have a team as well. And what would you say have been your biggest learnings as an employer since starting the business? Yeah, I guess we're only a small team, but I think it's like regular, first of all, regular catch ups, like really understanding where each person is. Because like in my my day to day role of like uh, speaking to clients and sales, really understanding how Mark and Martin and David and what they're doing with the product feeds into my role. So, so like, really important because I get lots of questions from clients about different aspects so I think having regular catch-ups and really understanding what each other each other do is really important as well as being really transparent with how many hours you've worked this week what if, what have you put in we all trust each other to do this but I think being transparent and us be able to revisit okay last week I spent 30 hours working on this like LinkedIn video it wasn't really worth it and you know there's no harm in being able to have that open conversation with each other. So regular catch-ups, really clear, understand of what everyone's doing. And then make, you know, people have their own ideas and own you know, perspectives, which will help, which will, will really help you. And if you have had a really crap, sorry, a really bad week and it's just not gone to plan, just, just say, or, you know, just couldn't get your head in it. Yeah, there's probably things your team can do to help pick you up. So you do have to rely on each other as a small team. I think that's that's super important yeah that's really good to trust rely on each other open honest communication yeah that that's it yeah really um having that as you say that trust in each other um mm. it is super important so yeah if you had to start again from square one what would you do differently oh god um yeah great great question i guess the the problem is with the question itself is I learned so much from all the things I did wrong at square one so I start and I it took me on a journey where where we got to now and I don't think I would have figured out half of these things without making all those like mistakes mm -hmm. um I guess the main thing for us I think we've is trying to understand who you're targeting like we've been to trade shows where we've been cool all our target audience is here like we're targeting the footwear market so as a footwear trade show we'll go there and it was actually rubbish like we didn't really get any sales from it or interest you have people come up to you and say oh that looks good and it's because I said it's a footwear trade show it was only buyers of the shoes there it wasn't really the people you wanted to speak to in the e-commerce department or you know you know the marketing team so it didn't really work so it's probably trying to make sure you take time to try and understand who you're actually targeting great this is the first call you're targeting but then get really specific about who's your ideal customer profile, who you really targeting and where do they hang out? And most of the time you find that out is by going to just, just trying to get to as many events as possible in person ones, which are free. Um, there's quite a lot out there, which uh, companies lay on as part of their marketing and just speaking to people and see where they've gone. Like ask people, like, oh, what events have you gone to this year? What, 
and you start getting trip fed loads of different things we're going to which you never thought of so yeah trying to get out and speak to people is super important marketing and sales you can just waste a lot of money really quickly it's an expensive an expensive thing to do and you mentioned um earlier that especially at the beginning that you have to do very very long days you have to uh, do a lot of hours and how do you balance your personal life we met the lovely gus earlier um with the demands of running a business um i guess it's so especially with uh, my partner, I guess, which I try and be clear about, like, how, it's, it's boundaries, isn't it? So I know there's going to be nights where I'm going to need to work, be, work longer. And same with the team. It's been really clear and transparent. I'm going to have to be work really long hours. Like, I've got this project coming up next week. And you can sort of foresee, it's like, oh, it'll be fine. You're not going to work long hours. But it always happens. But every time there's a deadline things get pushed back and you just have to sort of make sure you're clear. It's like, okay, next week I'm going to be you know, working long hours. But then couple that with Friday, just being like, I'm going to shut my laptop at four o'clock. Let's go. Like we'll go out to dinner. Even though a lot of business doing well, nothing in afford dinner. But um, but yeah, you're going to actually try and take time and you're going to make sure you have weekends off and not have your phone or laptop. And most of the time, like my partner's really understanding. She understands there'll be times where you just got to jump at something and you'll be there till like we've had applications for grants and me and Mark have been working till 3 a.m. But it just the application deadline will pass. And so make sure when the weekend comes, you actually take some time off. And it's really important for yourself, like knowing how, how you tick. You mentioned at the start, I, I'm an ultra, I call myself an ultra cyclist. I wouldn't be able to function if I didn't also have my hobby and taking like Sunday mornings always uh, but it's how I see my friends we go cycling and I come back and I feel refreshed I'm really happy you know I could jump into work after that because I feel really happy so it's just understanding what makes you tick so for me hanging out with my girlfriend cycling on Sunday morning and I'm refreshed and I'm good and I can go do another hard week Mm -hmm. and you just will really want to understand what that is what makes you tick and then don't try not to lose that in the process of your business so, and also 80 hour weeks are not, is not achievable. Have a, have a target in mind, but you can't just say you're going to keep doing that. You have to couple that with, yeah, easy weeks and just normal, normal day-to-day life. Yeah. Unless you're 20, maybe you can get away with it then, but I'm 35 and I struggle to do it. Now, so. <laughs> so, so make, make the, the 80 hours, the exception and not the rule of your yeah don't don't feel like i think it's a bit of a fallacy long hours means you're being productive those long hours especially if you do it back to back week in week out you just get less productive and then you're just going to hit a real bad burnout within a month or so so just making sure you can you have a balance in there because it's just not sustainable long term especially when you're growing a business you're not we're doing this for the next like as you say what's the next five years can't be doing 40 hour no 40 80 hour weeks for like the next five years yeah. so if there's a project coming up and it has to be done great put it, put a load of time into it because as a business no one's going to ever pick up something from you mm-hmm. and says i worked at a big corporate firm and the wind's always sailing at your back so if you don't do your job that week they're still going to make money think other people can pick up things if you're not doing well as a business, it's all on yourself. And if you don't do it, you know, your business fails. Um, but yeah, just really try and make sure you seek that balance because you can't keep doing 80 hour weeks. Absolutely. And another topic that comes up a lot when I speak to newer business owners is finances. And it's just like, I'm not good at financial management. I'm not good at math. I don't know how to do this. What would be your advice for someone just starting out? Um you just you just have to learn these things don't you um like you don't have to be good at financial management but yeah i guess you just have to just a basic forecast it can be painful but sit down and just try and try and learn it um excel i i always struggle with building excel so so use chat gpt for all the formulas you need to help build it things like that um but yeah you just um like like with everything like you might not know a sales channel particularly well but there's a ton of knowledge on YouTube and on the internet about what to do. So you just have to, you just have to learn it, I guess. You don't have to know the ins and outs, but it's just the basics get by. And it's really important if you're ever going for in, investment, <laughs> investors will really needle in on your um, what your 
projections are on your finances so you need to be really clear mm. so it's yeah sadly it's just something you have to learn it's painful mm. and just just take some time out and reward yourself by having a short day if it's a real painful morning doesn't it have the afternoon off and go on a bike ride <laughs> So, whether you like cycling or not just go for a cycle yeah, bike honestly, bike. <laughs> so much happier. get an e-bike and just fly around a mat if you've never cycled before anything it's great fun okay so you're saying <laughs> finances is just something that every business owner needs to have at least a basic understanding about yeah to, to a certain extent just that sort of what's coming up how much have i got how am i going to get and it it does be honest i really like it in the sense it focuses you because you look at it and think oh actually I need, how do I get to this? Like, I need £10,000 in the business this month. Well, how many clients does that mean? Oh, okay. So I need to get, pick up five clients. And there's like, okay, so where am I going to go? And it actually focuses you to do the important things in your business. So it might be painful, but actually it's a real good focus and understanding about how you're going to make your business work. And then, you know, and also it helps you understand, actually, have you got a good business? Because if you've got to go get 200 clients a week, is that really sustainable to build it? So you have to understand it. It's just, yeah, it's just just one of those. So cool. Um, and the last question: What do you think are some common misconceptions that people have about running a business, and how do you address them? Um, if if I'm speaking to sort of Joe Public, everyone thinks I'm a millionaire. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Never been further from truth. All that you're overworked and overstressed constantly and as i said before you know you're working on something for five ten years or your whole life you know you can't run like that so yeah i i think me and mark and w will have quite a good balance so that's probably two big uh, misconceptions oh i did i felt like i write something, something down, which is better but yeah i i think those are probably the two biggest uh one yeah and th- as i said at the start like I, someone will always give you like um loads of people give you lots of advice like as you say um oh nike did this really cool marketing strategy and everyone just thinks it's like oh it's easy someone comes up with this great idea but there's so many bumpy hurdles within that so um yeah and one of the other ones i had is a bit of a pet peeve of mine people always say misconception oh you can just message anyone on linkedin and they'll they'll answer you yeah most of the time that's not a good channel just going around constantly messaging people on linkedin Mm -hmm. so um but it's one everyone seems to give me advice about it's just not not a good way to grow a business and and speaking of linkedin what's the um, best way for people to find out more about you or to get in touch um so to get in touch and find out more um so our website so it's all axistudio.com um or follow us on LinkedIn and just, you know, comment and look at what we're doing. We try and post um, a few times a week um, about what we're doing and, and things going on and launch of new clients. So yeah, that's, that's the best way to get in touch and have a look at our 3d photos and what they are and what, how we can make money for your business. And spread the word to the shoe. Maker. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today, Tim. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Olivia.